48 p.m. What a perfectly normal and sane time to set an alarm. Ugh. Oh shit. I wonder how the new video is doing. Oh, oh. oh my god! the views! Oh my god! I get it. I get it. Uh, okay. I read you loud and clear. Message received. Two more videos, one for each of the tanks that I didn't cover in the last one. We've still got two more designs to go. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> Message received. Let's not waste any more time. <laughs> Let's get right into this second tank that I built. All right, you scallywags. You wanted it, here it is. The second Sprocket AI video in what I guess is going to be a three-part series. Not that I have any issues with that, but um, yeah, the amount of uh, responses I got on that video has been incredible. I, I, I seriously cannot believe that video actually blew up. I, I thought it would do pretty okay, but uh, wowee, I've gotten a lot of views and a lot of comments on that video. So thank you guys so much for watching, for subscribing, and for commenting. Uh, I read all the comments, so I saw every everything trust me <laughs> a lot of good positive comments telling me to make it make the next two parts separately which is what i'm doing a lot of also very weird comments <laughs> a lot of people um who liked the design of the first build a lot of people who didn't like the design of the first build i saw a lot of comments of uh less than less than enthusiastic uh results out of this out of this video had a uh, one guy comment about how flat my chest is apparently uh, i guess i'm i guess i'm skinny i, I am pretty uh, underweight for my age and height and everything so yeah i definitely need to go to the gym but i appreciate that fella pointing that out and uh, a couple of discord dms including a gentleman who uh who thought that i was talking too fast apparently i, I talk as fast as eminem according to that commenter same guy also told me to make these videos more autistic that i should add more autism uh more humor more memes more things like that so uh thank you buddy i will be sure to include a uh hot mlg 420 meme uh dank meme right here in the video get ready here it is three two one the brand new burger you can fuck this burger is better than sex you can fuck this burger only at burger king you can stick your dick in this burger your balls will explode guaranteed say my name That's a bug! That's a bug! That is a bug! Man, come on, now, get that pep off there! Your penis is exactly the right length and beautiful. <laughs> Awesome. I hope that was good for you guys and it was good for me, but we're in, we're in a tank design right now. Enough about all that. Thank you guys for watching and commenting, but this is a tank. So this is the second tank that I'm designing here as part of this competition. You've already been seeing some of this footage speed by, uh, and you can kind of see what I did. I basically just set this up the exact same way that I set up the first prompt in terms of the opening questions, explaining Sprocket to the AI, because with each iterate, each time I start a new chat, I'm assuming that the AI has forgotten what Sprocket is as a game. So I have to remind the AI what Sprocket is, and I just copy paste the exact same, um, 
paragraph that I had in the first scenario, which by the way, I did uh, at, at multiple requests in the comments, but also at a request in my Discord, um, I posted uh, both of the prompts that I used in that video, the previous video, in my Discord in the Sprocket channel, and I pinned them so they can always be found. Um, and after this video releases, I will also post the uh, edited prompts that I used for this video. So if you're interested in reusing these prompts, join my Discord and you can get you can copy paste exactly what I said. Uh, for this second scenario, I basically just copy pasted all of this all the prompts that I gave to the AI the first time around, but tweaked a couple of things. Now we are going with a Western Europe, uh, more specifically France. I'm really thinking France here, but as the design goes, I start throwing in some British stuff as well. Um, and the AI did give me slightly different responses. Obviously, overall, it kind of did what it did before, where it listed out. In the bullet points one through eight exactly what I asked it to to list out. I ask it uh, what features should the turret encompass, how much ammo was do you consider good enough for sustained combat, what do you consider adequate protection, uh, what caliber of weapons should the tank be able to withstand, and from what distances. Again, I'm being as specific as I possibly can. And with these sort of like these these secondary questions that I'm asking the AI to be more specific, it, it's more or less giving me the same answers. First prompt, the AI told me that the tank should have 75 rounds of main gun ammo. In this prompt, it also specifies 75 75 rounds. Although interestingly, in the first prompt, it says that it should be able to store 5,000 rounds of MG ammunition, but in this prompt, it said only 2,000. So, so there is, there is change. There is the AI is taking the same information and interpreting it slightly. A and I do wonder how much of that is due to the minor tweaking I made to the prompts. It, it, there, I know that there is, there is a button to get the AI to regenerate its previous response. So I do think even if you fed the AI the exact same prompts every single time, I do wonder if you would get slightly different answers. Um, which is quite exciting. I wonder if anybody out there who has, has taken my prompts from the Discord and gone out and tried it on your own, like copy-pasting exactly what I said to the AI and tried it yourselves, I wonder, did you guys get any any different results? Um, let me know in the comments down below, because that's, uh, that is, you know, I'm not really an AI geek or anything, but now that I'm thinking about this here behind the mic, I'm not gonna lie, uh, I'm finding that qu quite interesting, the idea that, that you could get something different, even if you don't change anything. So for this build, I pretty much had one thing that I instantly wanted to get off the ground, which was I wanted to have tracks that came over the spawn sends, that came over the sides of the hole, a lot like a Churchill. I know that I said I was thinking about France when designing this tank, but I was also instantly thinking of, of Churchill. I just, yeah, I wanted to have tracks, the, the tops of the tracks that came up to the, the roof of the hull and the tank wouldn't have spawns. The tanks like the B1 Bis, right? Things like that, where, where you do have that larger silhouette to it. I thought made sense. I figured it was era appropriate and, and, and faction appropriate. Um, right here at the rear, I've always got to put my Sherman influence somewhere. So I create those little crimped angled, uh, back angled sides, uh, pieces of it to, to bring into the Sherman because again, I'm always Sherman, always thinking about Shermans when I design these tanks. Um, and also instantly you're noticing blockier. This this tank, I wanted this tank to be blockier. I did not want to go the T-34 route again. I didn't want everything to go casted. I didn't want everything to be rounded. And so I'm going blockier, I'm going sharp, I'm going aggressive angles. And actually here at the front, it looks like I'm absolutely destroying the tank right now, but I promise you there is method to my madness. Um, you can see I kind of create like a bowed shape front. Um, in my head, I'm thinking of like the BT tanks or like Walter J. Christie uh, prototype tanks in, in my head, but I guarantee you, I mean, Valentine also instantly comes to my head with this, this like, I've heard a teabag refer to that as, as like a proto pike nose on the Valentine. I don't know if I'd call it a pike nose, but I, I can see where you get it, get the idea from. And then to achieve the effect that I'm thinking about with the, the high rise tracks, I'm bringing the return rollers as high as I possibly can make them. Um, I don't end up getting them all the way to the top because I want to put fenders on this tank as well because I, I don't actually know what I want and I sort of build this as I go. Um, as, as much as I'd like to think that I have a, a good idea of what this tank's going to look like when I start, I really don't. So I come in with ideas and then ideas don't work and then I start changing stuff and then, and then you know, you end up with what you end up with. That's called creativity. Wow, isn't that, isn't that weird? I also didn't want to mimic the T-34 design uh, in the suspension design, so I'm not going with any larger scale road wheel design here. I'm not going with a Christie type suspension. I'm trying my best to, until leaf springs are added to the game, which by the way, Hamish has confirmed that he will be adding leaf springs to the game. And holy fuck, I am waiting for that day because right now HVSS is in the game, but it kind of sucks. It's really, it, it glitches out and it's buggy and it, it does not really work. 
Um, I've tried my best to make it work with designs and I just can't. So I'm using a torsion bar suspension, but pairing the road wheels so they're in like pairs of two. So it's like kind of the same effect as a leaf spring suspension. Not really at all. Now that I think about it, it's actually, it's not a leaf spring suspension at all, but smaller road wheels, uh, more of smaller road wheels. The fenders, I went with Churchill fenders because again, I'm also kind of thinking of the British here. And this silhouette it is definitely what I'm going for. This like, it's, it's shorter, it's longer. Yeah, I think, cause I think for this design, the AI did ask me to keep it low profile, which was that this was my interpretation of keeping it low profile. It's a far cry from, from the first design that I made. And that's very much by design. Yeah, so interestingly enough, also with this design, the AI did not give me any specific length, width, heights requirements like it did for the first tank. In this one, it just gave me a weight. It must not exceed a weight of 25 to 30 tons. Um, it explains, again, easily transported by rail, capable of bridge crossings, which is fair. But uh, 1938, a tank of 30, 25 to 30 tons is pretty easy to avoid. So it, although it was a technical requirement, I honestly didn't think about it much during this build because it was pretty easy not to end up going that heavy. Now, you could argue that I could have just made this thing absolutely monstrously heavy in terms of armor, because I mean, shit, I can I can go up to 25 tons, but there is, there is a speed efficiency. There's, um, actually, that's another thing that this tank had that the other one didn't was this one had a, a maximum speed. So uh, I actually did have to consider really how fast this tank was gonna be. So I couldn't make it really, I couldn't make it too armored. Uh, here on the engine deck, I actually, looking back, I know that we're watching it being built right now, but just the results that I got out of this was really nice. I think this probably had my favorite engine deck that I built of the three designs that I did for the, for these videos. I don't know what it was. I just I just really sort of popped off here. Um, I liked the, those new grill pieces that Hamish had added. They looked really cool, and I've been waiting for an opportunity to use them in some kind of design. And then that, uh, the stowage, that like canvas bag in the mesh, in the mesh bin at the back uh, was something that uh, I had used a lot before, but hadn't used it like this. Like I, this to, to me was a very creative use of that asset. And I felt very cool doing it, even though Sprocket veterans are probably looking at me being like, dude, what the fuck? I, like that's the most basic engine deck I've ever seen in my life. But to me, I was I was very, very proud of that engine deck. I thought it looked really cool. Although maybe the third design actually had a cooler engine deck. Well, I don't want to spoil too much, but I'm, I, I'm personally, I don't want to get ahead of things, but I am personally very impressed by th my third design with this series. I think with each tank, I, I kind of understood better and better what I wanted and what I was getting. And I learned how to really work with the AI more and more. So I, I think these do get better and better. I do think my first design is the worst. I think this one is, is quite, actually this one is quite good for one specific reason that we'll get to later. And then I think my third design is by far the best, the most interesting and the coolest one that I built. Um, so you'll have that to look forward to guys. I think I think the third video is is probably the coolest one. Uh, but we are building the, t the turret here. So this is, again, I wanted to straight avoid uh, curvy stuff, no curves. I wanted full blocks on this. For some reason, now is when the FT-17 popped into my head. <laughs> I, again, I don't know why, but at this point I wanted some kind of weird FT-17 thing. Uh, even though the front kind of looks 7TP, I don't know why, don't ask me why. And then at the back, I'm really trying, I'm trying to crimp this like tail that I've created at the back and yeah here we go I'm crimping the back here to be like this tail and for some reason like in my head I'm thinking of the FT-17 but the FT-17's tail is on the hull not in the turret so I really don't know where I got that idea from but I thought it looked cool and I kept it uh mantlet I went with the M10 mantlet uh mostly as a placeholder but I honestly liked it so I kept it uh I, I was sort of I just didn't know what else to do. And then when I had the M10's mantlet, I figured the gun would should look very M10-esque. So I kind of went with like what the M10 had this like fat gun that gradually gets narrower as, as the cannon goes. With all of these designs, I'm not thinking, you know, this is 1938. So yeah, we can have 76 millimeter guns, but like they're not gonna be long. They're not gonna be huge. They're not gonna be tank destroyer -y guns. I'm, I'm thinking of most of the tanks, most of the medium tanks that existed at this time. And all of them have pretty short barrels. It's a 75 millimeter gun, just like the previous design. Again, not, not something that the AI changed. But what did change is, is that the AI did specify the tank to have a machine gun on the roof. Where's armament? 75 or 76. So actually I could have made this a 76, but I didn't because I'm stupid. And at least two machine guns, one coaxial, which is fair. That's what we had on the last design and one mounted in the turret or hull position for anti-infantry and anti-aircraft use. So this is a little bit of a, a instance of the AI being kind of quirky and dumb, where it, it tells me that I can have a gun mounted in the turret or the hull position. And now saying or tells me that I can't have both. That's just how I interpreted it. But then it tells me for anti-infantry and anti-aircraft use. And last I checked, a bow machine gun is not really the best for use against aircraft, so roof-mounted machine gun it was. <laughs> and also that helped separate it from the previous designs. And also, all the way down it, later in the prompt, when I ask it about what features the turret should encompass, it does literally say a secondary machine gun. It says, in addition to the coax machine gun, the turret should also have a machine gun mounted on top, 
which will provide additional anti-infantry and anti-aircraft capabilities. So, so the AI did specify, yes, I want this machine gun on the roof, which is interesting. I wonder if the AI was thinking that because it knows that it already was, it was already basically suggesting that previously in the conversation. So I wonder if when I asked the AI what features should the turret encompass, the AI remembered, hey, well, I already told you that you should have an extra machine gun either on the roof or down in the hull. So when I asked it what features should the turret have, it thought, well, hey, put that machine gun up there that I told you about earlier in the conversation. Uh, armoring the tank, the AI specified the exact same armor as the first design, 50 millimeters at the front and 30 on the sides and rear, so that's basically what I did. Again, I think it was mostly the same thing. I put 60 in a couple different places. At this point, I'm doing a lot of decoratives. Um, I, I really went crazy here with these iron rungs. I tried to do that climbing up the side. I figured that turret would be pretty hard to get up, so I put some those ladder rungs on the side. Uh, I put more visibility slots on the sides of the turret for people to look at. I put some ladder rungs here on the side of the hull, but I, I do end up getting rid of them so I can make space for other stuff. These periscopes on the roof of the turret, I made them big like ears. I, I literally thought about that, about how they looked like kind of like ears or uh, eyes, like Mr. Krabs or some shit. I just thought, I don't know, I just thought that was funny. Um, and then the AI also specified the smoke launchers, or not smoke launchers, the, the ability to deploy smoke. So I put that here on the engine deck, uh, but of course it has hooked up to the exhaust. And to make it hooked up to the exhaust, I did this really wacky idea. I had this wacky, wacky idea. You can see me here placing these little rung ladder pieces. These are supposed to be pipes. The, the, uh, this was my idea of that I was actually going to make visual piping that led to the exhaust. By the way, I have no clue if that's actually how uh, uh, exhaust-based smoke systems work. Uh, I don't know that much about modern tanks. I'll be I'll be fully transparent. Um, but that it looked cool and made sense to me, so that's what I did. The AI did specify radios. Um, first of all, it specified good crew communication, then also specified that it should have a radio for communication with other tanks. So for, I kind of interpreted that as, as two radios, you know, an internal radio and then the, the radio that goes out to other tanks. And so I added two antennas for, for those two radios. And then yet again, we have this ammunition requirement of 75 rounds. Although I do not believe that the AI really specified here that the, that the ammo needed to be in the turret. So I didn't. Although I put one ginormous ammo rack here in the turret, which again, somebody from the previous video was like, that's such a stupid idea. And it's like, well, I, eh, that's what the AI wanted. Don't blame me. Um, oh no, I, I actually managed to fit all 75. I put 77 rounds. Oh no, that's right. Yeah, so, so you can see what I did here. So I, I put this giant ammunition rack here on the side of the turret, but then I noticed that that was covering up the, the double door hatch that I placed on the roof. So if you open those hatches, you can't get into the tank because there's an ammo rack there. So I was like, ah, shit, like what am I gonna do here now? So I widened the rear of the turret. I kind of get rid of my Renault FT fin at the back, but I, I made the bustle of the turret bigger so that I could fit the ammunition in there. Uh, but then also I had the radio in the bustle. So now I was like, well, fuck, where's this other radio gonna go? And now I have this idea to put the radio down into the hull. Um, this is, taking inspiration from the T-34, you know, funny enough, haha. The second radio was down in the hall being operated by the bow machine gunner. So uh, I thought that was interesting and made sense. And again, was different. So it gave me that opportunity to design that neat little antenna mount for the radio operator down in the hall. So I did end up putting some ammunition racks down in the hall and that actually meant that I could put way more. So you know, this tank wanted 75 rounds, but I actually ended up putting well into 133 rounds of ammunition in this tank, which is exceeding expectations, exceeding the uh, specifications uh, by one hell of a lot. So that was always nice to do. That's always fun. Now we're going for decoratives. Uh, this is before I've done any of the actual performance tweaking to this tank, I'm going with decoratives and I get really, really creative with these spare track links. You saw on that side of the turret, I did like the two uh, track links on the side of the turret and I actually built that little rack for them to sit on. I thought that was awesome. And I took this a million steps farther with this plank of wood, this actual like shelf on the side of the tank and then the track links sit on that shelf, even positioning that last track link at like a slight angle because it can't quite fit all the way. So I'd imagine a crew member would just like slap it there like, ah, it's good enough and slap it on there. And then the tracks, you know, there's a couple of them missing. They're all, they're stacked on each other in groups of three and there's a couple missing to show that, you know, the crew act, is actually using these. And then here with the road wheels on the fenders, I absolutely love the, the spare road wheels, by the way. I love, love, love the spare road wheels. I use them whenever I can. And here I'm, I'm doing uh, something that I actually learned from uh, T-Bag. Shout out again, T-Bag, big friend of the channel. Well, he's learned a lot of things from his competitions that he's judged and he's taught them to me. Getting these track links to be positioned, you can, you can position them all sort of dangling off of each other off of the ledge of something. Uh, I've done this off of turrets all the time. I love uh, to dangle. I love the aesthetic of like these dangling track links. I do it on turrets all the time. And I thought it would, I thought it looked really, really cool here having it off of the, the road wheels there. And I also just love asymmetry. I love the idea that the left side of this tank is caked in 
spare track links and road wheels and such. And then the right side of the tank has like none of that. I don't know why, but to me, again, it, it suggests a crew. There's a crew of people who operate this tank. And I mean, first of all, that ladder rung is on the left side. So the crew is getting up and off this tank from the left side constantly. So they're always on the left side of this tank, getting in, getting out, hanging out next to it, doing whatever. And so naturally when they need quick access to spare track links, they're gonna get out of the tank from the left side. And when they when their boots hit the dirt, they're on the left side of the tank and all their spare track links are just, that, that's just where they put them because that's the easiest places for them to get it. And then with the paint scheme and decals, I'm going with this, again, this mixture of French and British. I know none of this is historically accurate. Trust me, I'm uh, unfortunately well aware. But again, I wanted that weird French slash British influence this is clearly a fictional world even though i'm specifying 1938 world war ii german invasion um I'm, I'm still not thinking of this as purely historically accurate so i it's got like french decals it's, it's very clearly a french tank but i also put like the british like bridge markings and stuff and unit markings on there because i just think they look cool i think those i think those like administrative decals on tanks look so good i love especially like the united states when when they do with sherman tanks uh lendley sherman tanks they always have like the shipping mark the shipping information on them that is so awesome if anyone out there makes sprocket decals and uh wants to give me files for those shipping labels like if anyone can recreate those like sherman shipping labels in sprocket decals and give them to me i will i would very much appreciate that <laughs> doing some more welding decals again I'm, I'm really getting all the cosmetic stuff out of the way first this time around i think just because i was i was just in the mood like I was really feeling myself this build and I'm really going in here and uh, yeah I'm using different welding decals this time around than the one that I used on the previous design and uh, I'm placing them everywhere this is not any hybrid cast slash riveted slash whatever design this is this is a fully welded design and so I'm not bothering myself with any of that and I lied we have rivets on here I kind of forgot about that um, I think most sprocket designers can can all agree that rivets are like basically mandatory um, on all designs even if you're creating a fully welded even if you're creating a fully casted tank you got to find ways to put rivets in there so putting these decals on this uh, this little engine uh, hatch that I included. I put this engine hatch here because again, the AI had, had specified the ease of maintenance. Um, I'm not trying to go for any sort of like, you know, modular detachable rear access hatch like I was on the other design, like copying T34. I just figured like, nah, as long as the components are easily accessible, I figured that that's good enough for the requirements. And now comes the super boring part, the tuning. This one did require a lot of tuning. Unlike the first tank, especially when it came to suspension tuning, I didn't have to do that much. But with this tank, I did. I had to do a lot of suspension tuning. You can see me taking it over the bumps. Part of a tank being able to hit a certain speed is obviously how well the suspension handles bumps and such. This tank, I do believe, is heavier than the first one. I'd have to go back and check. I'll leave an edit up here if, I, if I'm wrong on that. So I, I couldn't just quite reuse the exact parts that I did from the previous one. Um, I did take the same engine blueprint because, again, the AI specified that the engine only had to be a 400 horsepower diesel, which is not very specific, but it's specific enough that I can build something out of it. I think the AI in of itself is unaware of what exactly the tank is or what it wants because it, it kind of jumps between it should have this much armor, this much gun, yada, 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 but it should also just be a generally maneuverable, good armor, good gun. Like, it should be a well-rounded tank. And I get that, but, like, that's not what I want. I want you to, I want you to make me sacrifice things, AI. I want you to tell me this tank should only have to go this fast because we're putting a focus on armor, or because we're putting a focus on firepower, or... It doesn't have to incorporate this because instead we're focused on that with this design. That's what I wanted out of this. But it just kind of gave me, give it good gun, give it good armor, give it good speed, do the impossible. And I, I kind of have to interpret it for myself. Looking at this design, just based on how it looks, what what is this gonna fulfill? And to me, it, clearly this is French, this is long, it's big, it's heavy, it's got pre, I mean, 1938, 50 millimeters of frontal armor is, is a lot. So, I mean, I'm instantly thinking this is some kind of B1BIS, right? B1BIS, uh, any kind of uh, D1 or D2, like or an upscaled Renault of some kind, right? I kind of end up going on this wild goose chase that I'm trying to get this tank to go at least 30 kilometers an hour, and I actually have to go into the settings and change my speed, uh, my speedometer from miles per hour to kilometers per hour. I was getting like 22, 23, 24 kilometers per hour at best. Eventually just was testing it so much that I thought to myself, there's no way, I'm not gonna be able to get to 30. And then I read the specifications again and realized that it was a maximum of 30 kilometers per hour, which, um, firstly, I'm not quite sure why you need a maximum speed. I, I guess I understand maybe for mechanical reasons, but yeah, uh, there was a maximum speed on this tank, so... Uh, that's an interesting thing that the AI did. Otherwise, it had good performance. You can see me testing it here on um, on ambush yet again. This is my classic like interwar test testing ground, and um, it did quite well. It was definitely well armored. It, it definitely was taking a lot of hits um, from from these tanks that was I was facing against. And you notice here 
uh, as much as I say I was proud of the mobility of the tank, it is tough to go up hills. You can see I, I managed to beat the scenario on my, I think that was my second try. But again, it's a slow tank, it's well armored, it's good at some things, bad at others. I'm okay with that. So since it beat Ambush so well, I actually decided to try something very interesting, which was to pit this design up against uh, the first one, up against the uh, the Vanguard. The speed and maneuverability of the Vanguard meant that, especially when, when you can allow more of them in a scenario, um, you really just end up kicking ass. And um, I was okay with that, you know? Th these are two totally different tanks with slightly different specifications. Uh, I understand that some, game that some of these tanks are going to be better at certain things than others. And in a 1v1 fight, I don't necessarily consider these tanks to have to be as good as one another. The Vanguard is far more mobile and well-armored, all things considered. A 75mm gun will still struggle against the Vanguard, but its problem is that it's gun. The Vanguard's gun is not terribly good. The pros and cons of this tank is it has very good armor and a decent gun, but very poor mobility. I figured that with that combination of pros and cons, it would be better on the defensive. However, it didn't. It failed in the defensive. Playing as it in an offensive situation, it was also struggling, not performing quite as well as, as I hoped. The other tanks were able to kill us just a little bit too easy. I started noticing especially that I was getting killed a lot from shots to the neck. Um, and particularly, I noticed that my turret design had a really bad shot trap. You can see that the way I've angled it, um, the, the bottom chin of that turret is just it's just screaming, screaming shot trap. So I think I end up going into it and I end up upping the, the size of the plate again to 60 millimeters. Um, for, for some reason, I'd never go any higher than 60. Like there are definitely scenarios where I could have gone with like 80 millimeters of armor. But then at that point, like 80 millimeters of armor, I mean, that's the, that's the Panther's front plate. You know, that's like... That's really big and thick armor for a 1938 tank. Like, tanks in that day are just not going that hard. So, to stay somewhat historically accurate and just to respect the period that this tank is supposed to be in and just to make sure it, it still feels era appropriate, I, I kind of mentally limited myself to 60 millimeters of armor in any given spots. It gets to the point where, like, I'm, I'm really confused by it. Like, if, is this really that difficult of a shot trap? Like, is it actually that bad? I'm thinking, am I getting shot in the turret ring? You know, is that what it is? So I'm checking the thickness of the turret ring. I'm thickening up the turret ring. I think that one I was willing to go, like, really thick on. And I realized that, yeah, just the neck of this tank is just a bit weak. So I have a really interesting idea. Instead of actually thickening it anymore, I thought that, you know, in real life, these designers only get one shot. They submit the tank, if it meets the criteria, it passes and it gets put into service. If the tank then encounters other tanks, such as the Vanguard, that are penetrating it in places that they did not expect it to, well, in real life, you just gotta deal with that, you know? That, that, that's just something that you didn't account for. Like, sorry, but, you know, war sucks and the enemy is gonna have better tanks than you. So I figured, I'm not gonna do anything about it. However, crews, crew members, potentially serving in this tank, they would probably do something about it. They would probably add applique armor. So, to give this tank some real personality, I put these like applique chin and like top pieces, because I, I figure if crews were gonna do this, they wouldn't just do it from the, the bottom at the chin, they would do it at the top as well. And I disabled aesthetic applique. So these little panels here do actually have, I think they're 20 millimeters each. They do actually have extra thickness and it worked. I, I was still dying, you know, it wasn't foolproof. But it did actually work. It, I was dying less. I was taking more shots before going out, for sure. And I thought that was really cool. So I kind of kept going. I thought, you know, let's let's see what a crew like this, if they would put other applique armor. I just really went nuts with the applique armor on this. I added some to the bottom because the, the, the lower glacis of this tank wasn't kind of a known weak spot, but I figured why not? Lower glacis seems like the kind of place that crews would be putting applique armor like this, and, and I just thought it looked cool. And then I even start decorating the applique armor. So I start adding, yeah, like these toe hooks, and I start adding the lifting eyelets. I add these little panels to, to make it look like that these are actual just like random pieces of stuff that, that the crew have scavenged. And then I start going crazy with the weathering decals. Um, I noticed that I actually have decals for um, shell, like ricochet dents. And so I put those right on the applique armor panels to show that they are working. And then I start going nuts on dirt and grime decals. And then I put these stars on here, right? I'm thinking that this is, it, it is 1938, but now I'm imagining that this is a tank that has been used, let's say the year is now like 1943, right? Although it would be outdated, by let's say 1943, 1944 even. However, in, in a certain scenario, this might still be in service. You know, if the tank functions, they might still be pushing it out there. 
So I imagine this as a tank that's still being used, despite the fact that it's a 38 model, still being used in 1943-1944. So it is all kicked up in dirt and mud and grime. And by 1944, America's involved, the Allies as a faction are in full swing, so this tank, which previously just had, you know, sort of French-British markings, now that the Americans are involved, the crews have to slap on some big white stars to, so that the Americans can identify them as allies. And since those stars weren't original issue with their tank, they painted them on. And they painted those white stars on haphazardly. Uh, the white star on the front and the white star on the top of the turret, I figured could have been, you know, provided decals, like maybe their, their officer or somebody actually came up to them officially and said, hey, here's the official white star decal that you should include on your tank. They only got two of them, so they slapped one on the front and they slapped one on the roof. And then they kind of figured, well, hey, these American bombers or these American ground attack aircraft are um, uh, really bad at friendly fire, so let's add some more star decals to our tank so that we can not be shot at by these Americans. And so they haphazardly painted their own extra star decals I'm really crafting a story with this vehicle. And as you may have noticed, I also actually changed the uh, the unit marking for this tank. So th this is a different tank. I changed the serial number. I took off the Renard nickname that I put on there earlier. And uh, where this tank, the, the first tank that I designed was marked with the yellow triangle um, unit marking, this one now has the red square. So th this is, I'm imagining that this is same model, but this is a different vehicle with a different crew and, and different stuff. And I think it looks way better. <laughs> I think it looks way better than the first design. Um, I'm really happy with the way it came out. We only have a, a four-member crew. We only have the commander, loader, gunner, and driver because this doesn't have a bow machine gun. Um, and that roof-mounted machine gun is there available to use uh, for with the commander. I asked the AI what to, what to designate this tank and it gave me medium tank M1938 or M1938 Battle Tank. Medium Tank M1938 to me sounded a bit too American, so I went with M1938 Battle Tank, which I know Battle Tank is not really a great designation for a 1938 vehicle. <laughs> However, you can make arguments. I have heard it said before that the B1 BIS was intended to be some kind of universal battle tank, so potentially we could squeeze that in there, but I, I, I do not think so. Uh, and then the nickname uh, for this one really was Panthera. Uh, which it didn't, the AI did not give me a list of nicknames to choose from this time around. It just gave me Panthera. Um, as the AI supposedly explains that it's inspired by the Latin word for Panther, which represents strength, speed, and agility. Uh, the name also has historical significance as the Panther was a symbol of power and martial prowess in many ancient cultures. I guess totally ignoring the fact that Panther is a real name of real tanks. Actually, I was going to say a real tank, but we have the KF-51 now, so now we have multiple tanks throughout history that have, made, that have named Panther. And we'll go ahead and add this one to the list. So this was the only name the AI gave me, so it's the AI I chose for it, Panthera. If this tank truly is French, I probably should have given it a more French name. Uh, if anybody has any name suggestions for this tank in the comments down below uh, for a more French style name, please throw it my way. After watching this footage, I do think I'm going to change a couple things about this tank. Firstly, I think I'm going to up the caliber of the gun from 75 to 76 millimeters. I might try to see if I can make it perform a little bit better. And I think I might try to do some really, really minor tweaks to this design. And I will post those updates, uh, the things that I end up changing about this tank on the Discord. And if any of you have any uh, any better name suggestions for a uh, slightly modernized or improved version of this design, please let me know in the comments down below. So I think that just about covers everything that I wanted to talk about in this video, uh, i.e. the tank. Um, uh, once again, thank you guys so much for all the support that you showed on the first part of this. Um, hopefully part two does just as well. And uh, there will be obviously a part three. So um, hope you guys enjoyed. If you like my content, if you like tanks, my name is Edit320. This is a YouTube channel about tanks and how much I fucking love them. But otherwise, I'm going to go ahead and let you go. You are your own free person and have free will. And uh, thank you again for stopping by. Good, adios, goodbye, get out, get out, stop watching this video now, ooh, ooh, you want to stop watching this video, ooh. get a fucking outro dude, like what is this?